How are we doing? Good. A little chilly today. Other than that, and another good day. Good day of practice, good day of work. Um, as we get ready to play a really good football team. Thank you. Okay. Hey, <laughs> you talked about sticking with your young receivers as opposed to signing somebody else. Mm -hmm. But is there a level of concern when three of the guys in the rotation are rookies and then your quarterback's a rookie, how that's going to work out? Oh, yeah, it's concerning. But, um, you know, if you practice and you trust them and you work with them and you feel good about how they're coming along, you know, you, you got to roll the dice. So uh, we feel good about the guys we have. You know, they got to go out and make plays. We got to put them in a position to make plays and kind of go from there. Antonio, last week you said you might cut back his reps from Oakland to Baltimore. Um, you know, have you seen him making the progress you want him to make? I think he's making it. You know, I think, um, you know, by little doses, you know, and that's what you want to see. You just want to see improvement. Uh, we did cut back on him, you know, last week. So I just think uh, that helped uh, in my mind, just watching him have more burst at the end, be able to play harder, longer. I think that's important. So uh, we'll continue to uh, travel down that road. But, again, we, we understand we're playing with some young guys. Um, they got to continue to grow. They're not, not rookies anymore. You know, they've been playing. So they got to go out and play well for us. How does that affect the way um, that Todd would – uh, construct the, the game plan for Sunday. We come up with a game plan. You know, and again, we expect these guys to make plays if their number's called. We're not going to scale back on anything we do. If we had to do that, then we would be searching for people, uh, as was mentioned, to, to put on our team. I mean, these plays we've been running since OTAs through training camp, through training camp excuse me, through uh, preseason and now the regular season. So we're not going to change. You know, uh, we're going to go play football. Dontrell Hilliard this week. Mm -hmm. um, where does he fit right now? And um, just if you could, you know, expound upon, you know, making that move. What just special it? teams. You know, give him a chance. He has a skill set that we like. He's fast. Uh, he's elusive. You know, he can. Um, he's did a good job on coverage teams. He's done a good job on, you know, obviously on receiving teams. So uh, we're gonna give him a chance to go out there and, and demonstrate what he has. You know, I know I'm looking back, but I mean, overtime throw to Landry. On the fourth down when he got hit. Boy, that was full of news. Did you get an interpretation on that, though? I mean, I read some stuff that you can't call illegal contact if the ball's in the air. Yeah, I, I did. I mean, I'm not at liberty to speak about that, obviously, as you guys know. Just going back to Hilliard real quick, he returned uh, kickoffs and punts in college. Are <clears throat> going to use him as a returner? Uh, I mean, he'll be, he'll be somewhere around there, you know, chance to get, get his hands on the ball. I'm not supposed to give away strategy today, am I? You know, but he's he's up for a reason, you know, so we'll see what happens. You talked about the positive impact that the takeaways have had mm -hmm. for you guys. You've been on the other side of that when you're game planning against, yeah. you know, Baltimore or Pittsburgh, whoever team to take the ball away. Other than telling your guys, hey, we can't turn the ball over, does that affect your game plan and the way you <clears throat> approach a game when a team is that good at turning the field like that? Yeah, I mean... You know, obviously tip balls, another team taking the ball away, you know, sometimes a tip ball is just as good as taking it away. So uh, you have to kind of plan against those things, you know, and make sure there might be a particular corner who's getting a, a ton of interceptions or safety or linebacker, you know. Uh, obviously you probably didn't want, want, want to attack that guy, probably want to look in a different direction. So does it influence what you do somewhat? Yes. I mean, you want to do everything you can to possess the ball and not turn it over. So I think you do look at it through that lens. Obviously, we've talked about Ogun Joby and the grinding and how he's improved himself. But as far as finding those type of players at that position, mm -hmm. how valuable are they uh, when you can you have a guy like that up the middle as opposed to, you know, we talk about the guys, the edge rushers all the time? No, you, you said it. I mean, I think those guys are uh, very invaluable. Look at the young man in L.A. He's been paid handsomely, you know, for being able to rush the passer that way. Geno Atkins over Cincinnati. Those guys are hard to find, uh, but they're very, very um, needed on a football team that has a rusher because then the ru edge rusher becomes even better or the uh, inside rusher becomes better because of the edge rusher. They kind of play off of each other. So I think it's a good situation for us. I'm glad Larry's improving. You know, the guy that caught my attention last week was Price. He did some really good things inside as well. So. Um, we got, we're developing some guys. We've done a good job that way. And again, as I told you guys before, I think John is always looking to improve the team. 
any way that he can, and I think that's important. Uh, Willie's is obviously big and fast, and you notice that, but when did you really start to notice, hey, this, this kid has a chance to, to make this team? No, we've always liked him. You know, since he was here, you just said he's been big and fast, and, you know, he has a long wingspan, you know, when he goes and gets a ball. So we, we knew that there was things he was going to get a chance to do, and he started demonstrating that he wanted to play special teams, you know, whatever it took to be a part of the team. Uh, he earned uh, that opportunity, and, you know, obviously we've been giving him more. You know, guys go down, he's been the next man up, and he's responded and done a good job. How heard for you by EJ Gaines and how he filled in for, for Mitchell? Last no, really, really good. You know, uh, EJ is a quality player in this league, knows how to play. You know, I think last week, the week before, he hadn't had much practice, you know, outside playing corner, and that, that was unfortunate. You know, but I, I, as I said, I thought he would come out and represent himself well and our team well. Uh, this past week, and he did so. So uh, he's got to do it again. You know, he's got to keep playing well for us. Look at Mac, how scary was that moment he had in training camp? When it just seemed like he was down for, for a while. Then. No, it, absolutely. You know, I think that was important that he got through it as fast as he could, you know, because the team needed him back. You know, you can never have enough good corners. I think we all know that in this league. You know, the, normally it's been the soft tissue injuries that taking these guys out, you know, so. You know, you always feel like there's going to be a chance that somebody's not going to make it all the way through, you know. And unfortunately, it happened with Mitch, but we have a quality guy in EJ Gaines that we can put out there, and he's done well. The takeaways being at 15 and already through five games exceeding what you guys did all of last season in that category, what are the main reasons in your mind for the drastic improvement? Because we we thought it'd be better, but to be this better is really kind of surprising. Uh, players first and foremost, and I'm very honest with you. And then the emphasis, and it's not we're not emphasizing any more than we did last year or the year before. I mean, it's always been um, something that we truly believe in as a staff and as a football team. We just have more guys who are capable of making plays to get to the ball. I think uh, a healthy Miles Garrett has something to do with that, and an emerging Larry Obenjobi has something to do with that. Um, those guys, uh, you know, have done a good job year two in, in Coach Williams' system. Uh, I think all of those things are factored in. But at the end of the day, I'm going to give all the credit to the players because I think we have some fine players who are making, you know, really good football plays and getting the ball out and taking the ball away. You guys are making the secondary. Obviously, there's an emphasis on speed, but was this part of the thinking too? Oh, yeah. You needed to have guys that can, can catch the ball, you know. Uh, you're going to get chances to get your hands on it. You know, I've seen guys that can't catch have been back there and not saying here, but guys who can't catch, they get their hand on the ball and the ball's, you know, it, it's not a turnover. In the next play, they make a first down and they score a touchdown, you know. So um, it's so important that when you get a chance to make plays on balls, you got to make them. And we still feel like we've left a lot out there. You know, we've had our hands on some other balls and we've got to continue to work at it. Stripping the, stripping the ball a matter of effort? I'm sorry. Is stripping the ball a matter of effort? It's a matter of know-how, too, you know, because certain guys, you know, carry the ball um, a little differently than others, you know, running backs as compared to receivers and tight ends and quarterback ball carriage. I think all those things we talk about, you know, we coach, uh, you know, to the detail to find ways to get this ball out. So I think our guys are well-versed on how different guys carry the ball in games, you know, to see if we can punch it out. When you look at the Chargers run game, is it the best one you will have faced this year? Uh, definitely will be one of the best ones we face, but it's the quarterback. You know, it still starts with him and will end with him. You know, he's, uh, he's as good as there is. Um, you know, he distributes the ball. He runs their system. Um, and he knows how to play the cat and mouse game, you know, between completions and handing the ball off. So, uh, you know, it's going to be about Phillip. But will this be the best run game we've seen all year? Probably so. About those two guys or what makes him a challenge? I mean, does Gordon and Eckler, what, what about that makes him a good combo? Well, Gordon's a physical runner. You know, he's a downhill, get after it, get behind your pads, but he's got good lateral quickness, and the other guy's fast. You know, he's, uh, you know, we've, this guy can catch and he can run. He does a lot of different things with the ball. You know, they screen to him, they do it all to him. So uh, they got a pretty good one-two punch, you know, but we feel like we do too, and so they, our guys see our guys every day, and. Um, you know, our guys have been a challenge at times in practice. So this, this would be a good matchup for our defense. It seemed like um, whether or not that game winning kick was blocked or not, apparently you said it wasn't. But yeah. You know, um, Did you see it? Yeah. I, I, you know, I thought. It's OK. You, you can know, tell me. <laughs> it was a strange path. Yeah, no, it was. That's what I said. I think he kicked the wobbler. Yeah. Um, my question is, 
question is, it looked to me like uh, the Ravens um, overloaded that side of the, mm -hmm. of the engage, and we it was three versus well. two. Yeah, we didn't handle that very well. So it looks like a guy had somewhat jumped off sides, and Daniel Fells went to go punch him, and then the other guy jumped. Tony Jefferson jumped in between the gap between Corbett and, and Fells, and he got through. You know, uh, we can't, again, you just got to stay with your fundamentals in those situations. You can't guess that the official will make a call or anything like that. You got to do your technique. You got to hang in there and, and do what we coach you to do. But even if you haven't jumped, it looked like that three versus. That's okay. I mean, that's, that's the alignment takes care of that. You're going to have three on two sometimes in those situations. That's, that's the way those teams overload that side. We can't, in the middle of it, decide, hey, offensive guys, go over there. You know, the width of, the, you know, of how we aligned and guys, how they would go about our technique takes care of all those things. It seems like everyone expects this thing is on the verge of taking off, but you got to win more than one in a row. Oh, right? absolutely. But, but yesterday you talked about Snoop Dogg and, and um, the bandwagon. Uh, do you feel that you have to keep this team grounded even before absolutely, it gets absolutely. to that point? We haven't done anything. We haven't qualified for anything. I mean, we've won two football games. We played five last time I checked, so we've done nothing. And even when we do something, we won't have done nothing. You know, we have a lot of work to do here. And I'm um, going to keep this team grounded in work and how we go about our business. You know, again, that's what Cleveland is about. You know, people that work hard, earn what they get and get what they earn and, and keep finding ways to do it every day. That's just who we're going to be. You know, I just think that's the only way to do this. We can't get caught up in anything else. We're just going to put our head down and keep working and uh, play the next opponent and go from there. We've known for a while that Joe Thomas, uh, 10,363 going into the Ring of Honor, but what do you think of that now that it's coming up? I think it's unbelievable. You know, I, it's, my time here with one of the greatest players to me that's ever played the game uh, at left tackle here in Cleveland was special for me because uh, watching Joe from afar and having a chance to coach him, I understand why all oh, you guys thought he was so special as a person. And then watching him as a player and watching a guy who would not take a playoff. I don't care what the aches were or what the situation was until he could not physically do it anymore. You know, and I'll never forget walking on that field when he was down there and not him not being able to get up and understanding that, you know, this might be it. You know, I, and to watch and look back on his career and see what he's done, man, that, that's amazing to me because I, nobody else has ever played that many snaps. And I don't know if anybody else will ever do that again for a long time because it just tells you how important football was to him and to go through all the seasons that he went through when things didn't go well. That doesn't happen in this league, and I think we all know that. So I think what he's done, uh, the one, the way he played, the, one he conduct, the way he conducted himself, you know, with class uh, within this organization, the way he conducted himself out in the community, uh, all the, the good things he did for this football team will never be forgotten. I mean, Joe Thomas is a class person and a, and a great, great football player.